Hello and welcome to Turning Point. This can truly be defined as a turning point in cricket's history. The untimely passing of one of the greatest of the game, Shane Warne. The man who could turn the cricket ball at his will, often called the Wizard of Oz. Shane Warne not just took Australian cricket to the greatest heights but also had very special connections with India. It was a love affair in blue and gold in Pink City. In this episode we look back at a great life and what Shane Warne meant to India, a generation of cricketers with a man best known um as someone who has uh, spearheaded several sports businesses including IMG Shane Warne's childhood friend Ravi Krishnan he was the first vice chairman of Rajasthan Royals Ravi thank you very very much for joining me on uh, podcast turning point at this hour my condolences to you and all of Shane's friends uh, losing someone you've known uh, while growing up isn't easy um let me ask you where were you when you learned of Shane's passing i was actually I, i've just got Back, um, firstly, thanks for having me, Erika. Um, it's a pleasure to be on the show. I, we go back a long way, so you know, and, and, and your concern and uh, for, for Shane and his friends and family and, and, and fans is is touching. Um, I'm actually in Mumbai. I, I came back to India after 102 weeks uh, abroad last week, and uh, I was actually doing some work. Um, um, and and then I saw the message. Uh, one of my friends had messaged me. And, with all these things you think it's a bit of a joke or maybe it's a hoax or maybe it's April 1st I checked my calendar um and uh and seriously I think you know it's it, 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 we're all, we're all still in a state of disbelief um you know no one should no one should go that early um it's a real tragedy and you were together at the Australian Open when Nadal won just a few weeks ago yeah it was just um you know it's, it's one of those all memorable moments you know we've had many uh, across the world and many countries and events and uh yeah we uh we were there and we watched some of the game together I mean we we were there separately he was there as a guest of the Emirates I was there as a guest of the government but uh we spent quite a bit of time together sort of watching and and laughing and and, and you know marveling at, at Rafa and you know it was just I'm glad we had that time you know in fact I like you know because I you know, it's just it's another special memory in in, in the history of a 36 year relationship Um Ravi you were two boys growing up in the suburb of St Kilda you went to the same school when did the love affair with the cricket really begin because i would imagine that you guys were exposed to several other sports as well yeah we we actually went to school in Mentone we played at St Kilda we went to school in Mentone Mentone grammar and actually my first my my first encounter with Shane was uh Uh, when we both when we both joined the team for the first time it was a summer tour we, we the, te- the team was going to Geelong to play a, a series of games he, he he was he was younger than me he was about 18 months or a year younger than me but you know he was this kid that obviously the school had identified um and they brought on um none of us knew anything about him we went on this tour uh he was uh, he was uh, quiet but confident uh at that time um And in our first game which was kind of unbelievable we uh, we batted first uh it was a kid that was a school from Tasmania they were all friends i think we made like 6 for 400 i mean they weren't that good um and then Shane came on to bowl i think he took 6 for 15 or 6 for 20 and broke out with the keeper's nose because the guy just didn't know where the ball was going and that and was how old was he back then he was 15 i think 15 or wow. so wow and you could tell there was something special about him he was you know amongst you know we were all a bit older than him um but you know he he was not um you know he had he had that confidence in, um and and you could tell there was something special and uh you know um he was just a naturally gifted athlete not just the cricket but Australian rules football pretty much anything that involved the ball um you know and, uh, but he loved cricket you know, he loved he loved sport um he lived he lived for that and uh you know that was that was evident throughout his life you know I mean he loved playing he loved talking about it he loved um you know mentoring um you know young players i mean he enjoyed his position you know as an elder as a mentor you know after his career was finished but I mean, that was evident as you know captain and coach of the Rajasthan Royals but just in everything he did so cricket was really you know something that he loved and he was lucky enough to to, to be exceptional at it 
Uh, Ravi, uh, before we talk about his next love affair, which is India and the Rajasthan Royals, I quickly have to ask you: Was it, uh, you know, AFL's loss and uh, cricket's gain uh, that we had Shane Warne in cricket? Oh, no doubt. I mean, look, he was a he was a very talented footballer, um, really talented. I mean, this, uh, but I think you know, at the end of the day, you know, you, you don't become a global figure playing AFL. You become, you know, a giant in a small pond. Um, and I think, you know, he was just great for cricket that, you know, he was identified, fast tracked, and this credit goes to a few people. Sean Graff, who was our coach at St Kilda, who, you know, who grabbed him in Sean, Sean played for Australia and just identified him and, and fast tracked him into the, into the team, into the first and then the Victorian team. Mm-hmm. And then the Australians, like, if you fast track they, they identified something special. Um, he had something special. So I think, you know, it, it would have been a tragedy for cricket to, to not have that. I mean, the impact that he had. On cricket across the globe, um, you know, is, is sort of you know, there's very very few cricketers in the history of the game. In fact, and it's also just impact as a global figure. One thing that's really evident to me in the last few days. I mean, I've been getting you know messages from all over the world from players, from schoolmates, from media, and you know, he was more than just a cricketer. He was one of those athletes that transcends transcends cricketers. And I think there's few of those as Muhammad Ali and Michael Jordan and. You know, quite, you know, a handful, right? And I think Shane in cricket terms is one of those. I mean, people know him all over the globe, cricket nations, non, non-playing cricket nations. And his impact was far and wide and, and broad and deep. So, you know, yeah, I think we are lucky, or cricket is lucky that he chose cricket and not AFL. Oh, we are lucky to have lived in the generation and seen Shane Warne. Um, Ravi, talking about you, um, you've held many, many roles in sports and many impactful performances that you've also delivered as an administrator but the one that you're known um, uh, most for in India and I would say most famous for is bringing Shane Warne to Rajasthan Royals. Tell us how did that happen? I understand you were appointed the vice chairman uh, in the inaugural season of the IPL but uh, what did it take to convince both the sides to have a captain that Australia never had? Yeah, look, I will say being vice chairman of the Rajasthan Royals is one of the highlights of my life, not just my career. It was one of the great years of, in my entire life and being associated with such incredible people and right at the top of that is Manoj and, and Shane. Manoj is the owner and, and Shane is captain coach. Um, you know, I was in the room when the envelopes were opened and Manoj had, had, had you know, got, got the Rajasthan Royals. Um, we go back to mid 90s when I came to set up IMG as part of the setup team here and he came with Monitor we were friends and you know he, he saw me in the room and he said look Ravi why don't you come and help us on this strategy and commercial and so sort of everything players what as vice chairman and you know I jumped at the chance you know um, and we started talking about the leadership team and you know and the coach and I said look I think it's worth having a chat with Shane uh, he might not had a couple of people in mind but you know Shane had sort of just wrapping up at Hampshire you know, I felt that I knew he had leadership aspirations, although we hadn't spoken for a while. And, uh, you know, I said, let me have it. And Manoj was initially, I think, a little bit reluctant, but he said, no, no harm in having a conversation. And so, um, you know, and I think Shane had, you know, Shane was the greatest captain Australia never, uh, ever had, never had. I mean, he had, he had an incredible cricket brain and I knew that from the time he was young. I mean, he just, he just saw the game through multiple lenses. Um, and, and that was evident when he led the team. Anyway, so I called him and I said, you know, I'm doing this. What do you reckon? And he said, look, I'll do it. I'm interested, but I, I want to be captain and coach. I don't want to be just, I don't want to just be captain. <laughs> I want to be captain okay. and coach. And that's the only basis of which I'll be, I'll do it. You know, Shane has that famous live line, you know, where he says the coach is the thing you take to the stadium. You know, um, he, you know he's a, mm-hmm. he's a ball cricketer and that sort of Ian Chapel mode. He believed, he believed in that. And, um, so I said, I said to Manoj, look, I really think this is worth exploring. And he said, okay, set up a call. And he, myself, and Raghu Ayer, who was the CEO, had a call with mm-hmm. him. Um, I remember it distinctly. For about 45 minutes, Shane sort of laid out how he would do it, what he would want to do. I mean, he's very impressive when he talks to him. He's very, he's very clear. It has real clarity, very linear, um, you know, not ambiguous. And, you know, I think all, the two guys were impressed. So Shane gets off the phone and then uh, Manoj says, we'll do it, turns to me and says, um, yeah, let's do it. But if it goes wrong, it's all, it's on you. So, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and, um, and, but, you know, and that was the beginning. And then 
you know, we got stuck in and, you know, we got into the auction and, um, you know, it was, it was just, it was great from then onwards. I mean, I think it was an incredible, he, he showed, he showed, not just to me, I mean, I learned so much from him in many ways by observing him, but he showed in that year what a leader he was, but also what a great manager he was. And, you know, someone who's run businesses, being a leader is one thing, being a manager is a different thing, you know, uh, you know, I always say leaders are born, not made a bit like fast models. But management is a different thing, and Warney was both. I mean, the way he managed, I said to him mm-hmm. at the end, of the way he managed seven nationalities or whatever it was, it's many people who didn't speak English, but he managed to galvanize them. Mm-hmm. Kind of incredible. Um, and, and that was a lot about the way he was. And, um, it was really a joy to watch. I mean, we got smashed in the first game, and everyone was like, gee, what's going to happen here? And to sort of come through and win on the last wall of the last game was really a fairy tale. I was listening uh, to Ravindra Jadeja uh, when he said after he hit that 175 against Sri Lanka, said when I met him in 2008, he was one of the biggest uh, names in the game. But it seemed unreal that I was going to play with such a big legend. I had just come out of that in the 90 level to play with him and share the dressing room with him was a big thing. Um, he gave Ravindra Jadeja and many others like Ravi Jadeja a very, very big platform. बहुत ही मतलब शॉकिंग न्यूज़ था जैसे ही मुझे कल पता चला तो एक आ, अच्छा नहीं लग रहा था और ऐसे लग नहीं रहा था कि ये बात सच है तो और 2008 में जब मैं पहली बार उनसे मिला तो तभी उनका नाम इतना बड़ा था तो तभी एक वो महसूस नहीं हो रहा था कि मैं इतने बड़े लेजेंड के साथ खेलने वाला हूँ क्योंकि अंडर 19 से क्रिकेट खेल के आए थे और उनके साथ खेलना उनके साथ ड्रेसिंग रूम शेयर करना वो मेरे लिए बहुत बड़ी बात थी और उन्होंने मुझे एक बहुत ही अच्छा प्लेटफॉर्म दिया क्योंकि अंडर 19 के बाद सीधा ही आई खेलने का मौका मिला था पहली बार तो बहुत ही अच्छा लग रहा था बट एक दुख की बात है कि लाइफ की कोई सर्टिनिटी नहीं है तो लाइफ में कुछ भी हो सकता है तो वही एक बात है कि ऐसे सडनली ऐसा न्यूज मिलना तो एक एक शॉकिंग सा फील होता है कि ये क्या हो गया बट भगवान उसकी आत्मा को शांति दे हम यही प्रे करेंगे रवि व्हाट आई अंडरस्टैंड इज दैट शेन हैड फिनिश्ड हिज प्लेइंग करियर ही वाज 39 यू फील दैट ही हैड गैस इन हिज टैंक टू टेक अप दिस रोल but more than you know just being a man manager being um, a captain to come into what you know you mentioned coming to a dressing room of seven nationalities and help them build a team together i think that was the most inspiring part of this story also did you think that chain had it in him to um, put this bunch of boys together and transform them into a a, a group of winners Look, I was always an unabashed, you know, believer in his ability to do anything because that's what made him what he was. I mean, he was a superstar because he believed he could do anything on the field. And, you know, we talked about that a lot. It was just an, it was just an you know, unbelievable self-belief. Of course, I mean, that was a fairy tale script, so you can't write everything. But, you know, did I believe that he could do something exceptional? I always believed that. It was, you know, I've seen it many times. But I think, look, at the end of the day, that was, you know, It, you know, Manoj, you know, was the one that took the money ball strategy. He was the one that drove that. You know, we, we spent the least in the auction. I think had we, a lot of teams had no real strategy uh, in that auction. We had a very clear strategy. You know, in the end, hindsight is, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but it proved to be the good one. I think having having a team of, you know, having a team of Shane was the superstar of the team. Everyone else were, you know, Graham Smith obviously was a bit of a legend, um, but you know, the rest of the team were, you know. Not as high profile. Shane Watson became a superstar after that. But he will credit Shane with uh, Shane Warne with being a big part of that. In fact, we've been in touch in the last 24 hours, and you know he's he's devastated because you know Shane Warne really gave Watto the platform to become a superstar that he became thereafter. Um, but I think you know um, at that time there was a little. You, you always need a little, little bit of luck, and, 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 and I think that we had that in those years. But I think the, the team selection was turned, turned out to be great. Um, you know, Shane led by example. Um, you know, and I think people looked up to him. That, you know, that sort of group of players. That was the right group of players. They, they, they looked up to him. He, whilst whilst they were in awe of him, he also made them feel part of his team. Not that you know, there was no there was no separation in the dressing room. Warney is very much one of the boys, but also lead that. You talk about Jadeja. I mean, he's one of the great stories. I mean, 
he's such a great bloke, and I remember him coming in. He was a, he was a young kid, and you know, but, all, but he had a bit of swag, swagger about him too. But I always remember, you know, the first couple of games, you know, first couple of games after the games, the boys would kick themselves, and people were sort of nervous to approach warning. And then I remember being in, at the at the ITC in Chennai. I think we just won. And, uh, it was one of the early games, and and. Uh, Everyone went down to, I think it was called Dublin, the bar there, and, and, and Jadeja walks in side by side with morning, sort of, you know, you know, rolling his shoulders and, you know, you know, that sort of head in the air. And I think, you know, that was for Shane Diddy. It's, it's always, it's what we call in the marketing, the halo effect, you know, you know, he made, he, he made, you know, he, put, he elevated, you know, people and even those at his own level, he made them look good. So he was just one of those guys. And I think that's what he did with the, with, with that team, you know, I mean, uh, you know, so many little anecdotes, you know, um, but you know, he, he made everyone feel part of the team, and uh, you know, he showed that the leadership is not just about the language and words, but it's about inspiration. You know, it's about understanding. You know, he'd do everything from have group calls, group meetings, to do one on ones with players. You know, I remember one player was in a bit of a slump, and he told me I pulled him aside and told me exactly what he told him. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that, but you know, he really, he really was an acute observer of those people around him. You know, he brought in Darren Berry uh, in a, as a, as his assistant mm-hmm. coach. Um, you know, Darren Lehman for the first three games. He knew how to put the right people around him to make him the best and to get the best out of them. Ravi, was there a magic mantra that Shane Warren had? Oh, look, I, I think he had many, but you know, I think at the end of the day, like I said, it, it's, it's, with players like that also, it's you know, it's very hard to sort of do as I do because they're so good. It's like, you know, Bill Richards or and those guys. That was so good. You can't sort of try to be there. But I think one of the things that, you know, you know, one of the things that he had was an undeniable commitment to the game. He expected that of the team. Um, um, and I think people would follow in his footsteps because he was never, he was never one to say, do this, but not do it himself. He led by example. Sure. And I think, you know, even his approach to training, like, you know, the right start roles never got to the game too early. There was a little bit of a warm up. He didn't, he didn't believe in overtraining. He believed that people knew what they were doing and, 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 and he knew how to get the best out of them on the field. He was a match player, right? He wasn't a net. You know, he, he, I said a lot, a lot of players make their hundreds in the nets or take their wickets in the nets. Warnie did it in the middle. Um, and he got the best out of players in the middle. But he was also, he was also, you know, he was also demanding. I mean, I remember what, what, so there was one day in Jaipur, there was a mandatory but individual um, pool session where the players had to go and do their stretching in the pool. Um, so it was mandatory, um, but it was you know, sort of on a, on a system. And I think two or three of the boys, or maybe four, didn't do it. Um, and again, I won't say who. And about five or six kilometres from the Sheraton, Raj Putana, which is where we were staying, on the way back from training, Warney stopped the bus and told them to get off and walk home. And that's what they did. Um, <laughs> okay. and, uh, and, and every single one of them me that that was the right thing to do, you know. Um, so you know he was he was hard, but he was um, very fair, much fair, and uh, yeah, an inspiration. Simple as that. He followed the game very very closely, even when he wasn't uh, coaching in T Twenty franchises across the globe. Ravi, in your uh, latter conversations with him, has he ever mentioned anyone being his true successor? Look, I, he had so much respect for players. I mean, you know, the one thing about him is he knew he was good, but he was not. He was not the. He was not a, he, I mean, as confident as he was. Ever, he never bragged. He didn't need to brag. He didn't. You know, he, he saw so many players were great. He saw so much in so many players. I don't think you know. I, I think it is funny though. I mean, I was just talking to one of the, one of the guys this morning. You know, you would have thought there'd be this, um, you know, sort of plethora of great leg spin bowlers after the morning. But the thing, because everyone wanted to bowl leg spin. But here's the thing. He was a leg spinner with a fast bowler's attitude. He was also not typically physically, like you look look at the Richie Benos and the Abdul Qadirs and they were wily, sort of wiry kind of people. They were finger spinners. What he was a wrist spinner. And you know, that's why, you know, that's sort of partly why he had the shoulder injury. He was strong as an ox. So to, everyone wanted to do what he did. She was, it'd be very hard. Physically, he was very different to, to what, um, to what most, Leg spinners are. I mean, I, I was talking to an Indian cricketer. I was on the, on the phone with an Indian cricketer two days ago who, who played against him. And he was saying when you, when you were at the non-striker's end and when he was bowling, the fizz, the revs on the ball, the, the sound it made was unlike anything you ever heard. So look, you know, I said he was an except, he was an exceptional kind of person because he, 
he, he took on an art, which is generally, I think, historically considered more of a gentle art, and he brought real aggression and fire to it. He actually made leg spin look very, very cool, Ravi. Yeah. And one of the yeah, one of the things you know, I would like to know about Shane Warne, and maybe my listeners would like to know. Shane Warne gone at fifty two. He's he's played the world. He's played the game at the highest level. He has done several, you know, coaching roles. He's been a very uh, passionate poker player as well. Was there any sport that he wanted to dabble into and he didn't do? He didn't do. Well, I don't know about that, but I tell you what, he was a he's a good golfer. He's a very good tennis player. I mean, we, 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 you know. You know, we played quite a bit of tennis here. He, he, anything, anything that involved a ball and, and 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 some sort of stick, he was good at. Um, and then obviously the football and stuff like that. So he looked, he, he'd play anything. I mean, we, that was that was part of the culture. I mean, that, that, that's how we grew up. As, you know, playing playing anything, he'd play anything. But you know, ser- he seriously could have said he could have been an AFL footballer for sure. And he was very talented in sport. So that he loved playing. He, he played table tennis. He played anything. He played so you, 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 you know, just loved playing games. You know, that was that was his life. And it was lucky that he turned that love and his skill into an exceptional career and exceptional life. Um, it's just sort of tragic that you know. I mean, he had so much to share. You know, and, and that's and that's a loss to the world and loss to cricket and loss to the next generation because he was a real teacher. He was a great teacher. Um, and uh, you know, I feel I feel bad for. You know, generations of Aussie cricketers and, and other cricketers. And here's the other thing. It wasn't just Aussies. I remember seeing him sitting down with, um, Mekhi Dapati Raju at the Taj and talking about speed bowling. And he was happy to share, um, knowledge of his craft with any nationality, any player, any age. He really could walk with princes and paupers. He was not, you know, uh, he was not like, I'm a superstar. I won't talk to you. Um, you know, he was really, um, he could, he could manage up. He could manage down, as we say in the border. And, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of an unreal, Humanity to him. Ravi, um, India loved him. India loved him very much. Um, I remember those stories for the first time when Shane Warren came to India with uh, probably several tins of baked beans uh, because he wasn't sure the kind of food that he would have uh, in India from there to you know being a royal, loving the royals. Did the relationship with India change over the years? I just think I think it's got better. I mean, you know, you know, I think this is what I mean. He, he, he had such an open mind. I mean, he was he was generally curious and he loved he loved traveling. I mean, you know, they loved India, he loved South Africa, he loved you know, he loved going everywhere. Um, you know, and I think his relationship just got better and better. Um, you know, and people loved him here. I mean, you know, and, and he embraced the, he embraced the people. Right? That he was not someone that would just hide in his room. You know, and. Uh, he was very patient, even at that type of times. You know, I remember so many little India stories, but the, the, the series we played, uh, Australia played against India, where they went, when, when Sachin made the 200 in Chennai after making four in the first innings, and Morty got him in the first innings, I think Mark Taylor caught him in the first loop, and, and then Sachin came around and smashed him, uh, in the second innings, and I remember, you know, they were in the field for a long time, and Chennai was hot at that time. And, Shane coming into the Taj Coromandel and he was, we, we, we were supposed to have dinner and he was just beat. I mean, I could just see him in his eyes and see his face and he was just exhausted and then the, you know, a bunch of kids came up to him as they do, you know, wanting autographs and, you know, a lot of players would, you know, would see, but he just, his face lit up and he gave him all the time and whatever and then he just went to his room and just, you know, he just, just, just passed out on the bed. But I mean, he, he was one of those guys that, you know, he recognised his place in the world he recognised his stardom. He was so patient, as impatient as aggressive he was as a bowler and wanting to get wickets all the time. He was so patient with people and so generous with his time, you know. And I saw that so many times in India. And I think, and, and, and he appreciated the adoration that he got here. You know, he understood that. I mean, like, he couldn't walk out, he couldn't walk in the streets, obviously, like most superstars in this country. But he appreciated the place that he had in, in the hearts of Indians and, and, and in Indian cricket, um, you know. And um, I think he really he loves coming here. Yeah, he really enjoyed it. He spent a lot of time here, both when he was playing and after his play. Ravi, uh, as I speak to you, I'm just looking at the picture of uh, you and Shane Warne in your school days in that schoolboy's dress in that black jacket, uh, you and Shane standing together. Um, if I were to ask you one last question on what is the biggest lesson one would learn from Shane Warne's life and work, what would that be? Oh, but I think that, 
be, be true to yourself. I mean, he was always true to himself. He was always, um, you know, he was always honest with himself and with people around him. Um, he was committed. Um, it's, just, it's not just one thing. I mean, I, I, he's the most, he said what he meant, meant what he said. He was genuine. Be authentic. I think, you know, I think that's, Shane was always his authentic self. And that is why I think people gravitated towards him, no matter whether they wanted to or they didn't. You know, you, you know, even people, I, I saw people who had preconceptions. I mean, been involved in conversations and then all of a sudden they'd meet him and then all those preconceptions would go away. He was just a, he was a, he was a people's person, you know what I mean? And, 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 and from the time I met him, when he was 14, 15, to, to, the, to the last time I saw him, he was exactly the same bloke. I mean, I, when, we, when I was, you know, you know he had no airs about him. And, you know, I think that's what made him special. You know, and, and, and the only one other thing is loyalty. He was just a great friend. I mean, very loyal mm. and very generous. You, know, you, you can't, people like that are not just one thing, but if I had to, if I had to, Sum it up because you, you see a lot of. See, if, I, if I say this to my daughter, like being your authentic self is probably the most important thing for a human being, and he was that one hundred and one percent. The genius who was the boy next door, Ravi. Thank you very, very much for sharing those thoughts with us at this hour of grief. Uh, my thoughts go out to you, all his friends, his family, and uh, wish you the very best. Thank, thank you, Ravi. Thank you very much, Ravi. That was great.